Happy New Jerusalem Ministries. It is so good to have you joining us once again. We'd like to say welcome to everyone who's watching us online this morning, if it be on Facebook or if you're watching us from YouTube, wherever you're watching from, we say good morning and it is a blessed day in the Lord. We are thankful that you all are here. And this morning, we are at the start of a brand new month. That's right, it's July 1st, and that's a very special month. But we are excited, and we're just excited to see all that God will do through New Jerusalem Ministries in our very own lives throughout this month. As we begin, I'd like to start this morning by asking everybody just to stand up, unless you're driving, but stand up wherever you might be right now. Stand up so that we might give God some praise. I know that if you, it's, it's, un, it's maybe unconventional in your homes right now. You may not be used to doing that. You're probably used to just having a seat while you watch the service. But this morning, I invite you to join in. And right now, I'd ask that you would stand up and just lift up your hands and give God some praise on this morning. Lift up your hands and tell God thank you this morning. Let God know that you are grateful that you have a service to watch on YouTube, that you have a service to watch on Facebook, that you can be with your family virtually this morning. Let God know that you are thankful to him for allowing you to see another month. Let God know that you are thankful to him for all the things that he's provided for you, for the ways that he's kept you over these last few months of this quarantine. Let God know that you are thankful this morning. This is the time just to say thank you. We say, God, we thank you. Say hallelujah to our God. Lift up our God on this morning. Tell God thank you. Amen. And what I'd like to do now is just get started with the scripture. And we're going to be reading 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. And it says, Eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Amen? Amen. We know that God has some special things prepared for us because we do indeed love him. And we are excited about those things. We may not know because the word says that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. And it's not even in our hearts yet. But God already knows that he has wonderful things prepared for those who love him. How many of you all love him on this morning? If you love him on this morning, let him know that you love him this morning and give him some praise. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh God. Lord God, we bless you and we thank you for just allowing us to see another day. Lord God, we say thank you this morning, Lord God, just for the fact that you've allowed us to come and to be able to have another opportunity to worship you, oh God. Lord God, we do not take that for granted. And Lord God, we know that we can worship you anywhere at any time, but Lord God, we thank you for the opportunity that we're being able to come together virtually, Lord God, to join with our family, to join with our friends, and to worship you corporately, Lord God, even though it may be on online. Lord God, we are thankful. Lord God, we thankful for all the ways that you brought us through this week, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the many blessings that we saw throughout this week, Lord God. We're thankful, Lord God, for the ways that you provided for us on this week, Lord God. We are just thankful, God. And Lord God, we worship you because you are God. We worship you because there is none like you. We worship you, Lord God, because you provide for all of our needs, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Lord, I pray that as we go into the service on today, that you would be in our midst, where we, wherever we are today, Lord God, I pray that we would feel your presence. Lord God, I pray that you would speak to our hearts, Lord God, as we hear this word from our pastor this morning, oh God. I pray that you would speak to our minds, oh God. Show us, Lord God, exactly where this word applies into our own lives. And Lord God, I pray that you would give us the strength to carry out all that you are calling us to in this season, Lord God. Lord God, I pray that you would open our hearts to see the needs of others, Lord. Lord God, I pray that you would open up our time, Lord God, so that we are able to share our time with others, Lord God. Show us, Lord God, where you want your hands and your feet, because we are your hands, God. We are your feet here on this earth. Show us, Lord God, where you want to use us, Lord God, and allow us, Lord God, just to have hearts that are willing to say yes, yes to your will and yes to your way, God. Lord God, we thank you and we bless you, Lord God, for being who you are. Lord God, we thank you and we bless you, Lord God, that you are an awesome God. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. So, now you all know what to do. Now it is time. It is time to share. It's time to share this message. So go ahead and right now click the share button. 
right where you're watching. Let all your friends know that it's time for church and that you want them to come and join church with you this morning. Right now, right where you are, go ahead and click the like button. Click the like button because you want just you want to show God that you are praising him. And that's one way you can do it this morning. Just clicking the like because you're not clicking it for New Jerusalem, but you're clicking it for the Lord. So click that like button because you're loving the Lord. Click the heart button because you're giving praise to God. And we also want to know where you're watching us from. So wherever that may be this morning, go ahead and put that in the comments as well. And if you are if you are a new guest, if this is your first time watching with us, let us know. We would love to greet you just to let you know that we are glad to have you this morning. And so as you go throughout the rest of the service, don't forget to pray. Don't forget to ask God to continue to speak to you that you might hear him not only today, but in the days going forward. I pray that you enjoy the service. Have a wonderful Sunday. Amen. Praise the Lord, New Jerusalem. Come on, can we give God some praise? Can we glorify the great and mighty God that we serve? God, we bless you for this day. God, we glorify you for this day. God, we thank you that our eyes have opened. We have the ability to wave our hands. We have the ability to stop our feet. And we can say, God, you are great and greatly to be praised. Come on, bless the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. He is worthy of praise. He is worthy of glory. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. We shall rejoice. Come on, anybody rejoicing and glad in it. Hallelujah. Come on, we came to worship the name of the Lord. And even though we're in our own places, we're gathered as one body in unity to lift up the name of Jesus. He's the King of kings and Lord of lords. He's worthy of all praise and worthy of all honor. So help us today. If that's all right, can you just wave your hands? Can you clap what you Hallelujah. sing? Hallelujah. And let's give God some praise. Woo! Yeah. Oh. 
we need you oh how we need you oh yes, Lord. we need you oh how we need you oh how we need you oh, oh, oh. say we need you we need
Tvé slovo. Good morning, New Jerusalem. Can you believe that we have come through six months of the year already? To God be the glory. And because we've come through six months of the year, that means we are at month number seven. It is the month of July. And so today, on the first Sunday of the month of July, we want to say happy birthday to all of our citizens and friends who were born in the month of July. Go ahead, right there in the comments, and, and put, up some, put up some hands, put up some balloons. Let us know that you're born in the month of July, that we might celebrate with you all that God has done in your life and all that God is preparing to do. We salute you the month of July. Happy birthday. Over anything that I could even imagine in my own mind, God, you can do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for you can go beyond our wildest dreams. You go beyond our even our imagination, God. That's how good you are. That's how awesome you are, God. Because you are able, God, to do all things, God. And we thank you for it. His promises are yea and amen. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. According to the power that worketh in you, in you, God is able to do just what he said he would do. Yes, God. God.
tell them, sister. Tell them, tell them one more time. Don't give up on God. Yes, Cause he won't give up on you. Come on, no, give me sing them. Don't no, give up. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. Come on, one more time. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. Whatever you're in need of, he's able. Whatever you're in search of, he's able. Come on, whatever your soul desires, he's able. But it's according to the power that worketh in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You gotta have power. Yes, Lord. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. It may not happen right when you want it. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. His timing is not our timing. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able. That's the Lord. He's able. Yes, he is. Well, it's preaching time. Turn with me, if you will, to the Gospel of John, chapter number 9. We're going to be taking a look at verses 1 through 11. The Gospel of John, chapter number 9, verses 1 through 11. And this is what it says. It says, as he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? that he was born blind. Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man, man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some people claimed that he was. Others said, no, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes open, they asked. He replied, the man they call Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and then I could see. As the Lord shall lead this morning, we wanna speak on the topic of, oh say, can you see? Oh say, can you see? Let's pray. Our God, our Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you, God, that you have been our constant companion all throughout this year. God, 2020 has taken us through some twists and some turns, through some ups and some downs, but God, we're so grateful that you have been right there with us. And so God, today we thank you that we're in the first Sunday of July, and we are worshiping you in spirit and in truth. And so God, we pray now for you to speak to us, speak to our heart, allow your words to nurture us and nourish us and, and help us to grow into the people that you've called for us to be. God, I ask for the anointing for preaching, that your word would go forth and not come back void. We claim victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Right there in the comments, you ought to write, oh say, can you see? Listen, I don't know about you, but God somehow won't let me forget that there is something special about this year of 2020. You know, this is the year that was proclaimed as the year of perfect vision. This is the year that had the church and the believers declaring that we would be able to see clearly the things of God. 
the year that we knew God had called for us to focus, to pay attention, to keep our eyes on the divine. And while I can honestly admit that, that what I am seeing happen in our world is not at all what I was imagining uh, the vision of 2020 would be, I can also declare that God is doing exactly what God promised to do this year. You see, 2020 is shaping up to be the year of perfect vision. The year when God would make plain things that we could not see before. The year when things that were once hidden would be placed in plain sight. The year when things that were a little blurry would begin to come into focus. 2020 vision, when things that we all knew were happening, finally became visible enough for the whole world to see. 2020, the year when the disparities in the way that black and white communities are policed has become clear. 2020, when the unequal access to health care and the disparity in treatment and outcomes in the health care system by African Americans has been made clear. After all this time, in 2020, some people are finally able to understand that what they call heritage is seen as hate waving in the winds of a Confederate flag and sitting upon the horse of a Confederate monument. See, the scales are being removed from the eyes of the world, and now we can see clearly the systemic racism that has been baked into every segment of the American society. 2020, the year that you began to see some things clearly about yourself. The year that you realized what was really important in life. I mean, it was 2020, it was this year that you began to understand that you can get by with less stuff than you thought you could. The year when you realized that you needed less things, but you needed more of God. The year that you began to appreciate your faith and your family more. The year that you began to reorder your priorities and, and learn that you were able to handle much more than you ever thought you had the capacity to endure. You learned that you were stronger than you thought, that you could stand up to more pressure than you knew, and that you were wiser than you gave yourself credit for. I will say that in some ways the world has been suffering from this, from a type of blindness. Some of it has been willful and some of it has been caused by ignorance. But what God has done in 2020 is to open our eyes. God has cured us. God has healed us from blindness. He is healing us just like the man in the text. God has made us able to see clearly in this year of 2020 vision. And God does not want us to stop here. There are more eye-opening situations on the way for us. There are more things. Do you believe it? There are more things that God is going to reveal to us in this year of 2020. And so what did we want to know today is how can we make sure that we don't miss what God is showing us in the remainder of this year? How can we ensure that our eyes are open to the future that God has planned? What is it that God wants us to, uh, to see? What is it that God wants to reveal to us in this moment in time? Well, I believe the answer to those questions is found right here in our text in John chapter 9. And I believe the first thing that it teaches us what it is that God wants to reveal to us at this moment in time, I believe God wants us to realize that the opportunities in this season are greater than you think. That's right. The opportunities in this season are greater than you think. See, it is in this story, it was the man who was born blind who receives full sight. But please know that those disciples that were walking along with Jesus, uh, they did all, not always see things clearly themselves. You see, they were not blind, but they did suffer from an eye disease. They suffered from myopia, or they suffered from nearsightedness. You see, they could only see what was close. They could only see what was familiar. They could only see what was apparent. They tended to limit the potential of God to just what they could see in front of them. They were unable to see afar off. They were unable to recognize, to imagine the far-reaching possibilities of the ministry of Jesus Christ. You see, they limited their potential to only what they had seen before or been taught before. 
That's why when the disciples saw the man born blind, they asked the question, who sinned, this man or his parents? Notice that they only offered two potential answers to their own inquiry. Based on what they had seen in the past, if a person was born blind, then either the individual had sinned or their parents had sinned. Somebody must have committed some kind of wrongdoing. This is what they've been taught, and this is what they believed. Their focus, though, was too nearsighted. Their focus was too limited. And so Jesus answered to them. His answer to them was, neither one of them sinned. There is a third option. The man was born blind because God was looking down the road. God, who is Alpha and Omega, knew that there would come a day when this man's blindness would be used to display the goodness of God. That the day would come when the Lord would use this man's condition to demonstrate the glory of God to the whole wide world. See, this man's condition was not punishment, it was potential. This man's ability, inability to see was not the result of sin, but an opportunity for salvation. And in this year of 2020, some of us are more like those disciples than we would like to admit. See, we can be just as nearsighted as they were. But I want to encourage us not to look at the situation in our world and diagnose it through a nearsighted lens. See, I know your money is funny and your change is strange, but there may be more to this than you think. I know that you're missing your friends, and I know that you are missing fellowship with other people, but God God may be doing more than you can imagine. Because of this pandemic, going off to back to school this fall or going off to college may be up in the air, but don't think that this is just about school. What we have to begin to do is look at our situation through a long lens. You see, God can fix a financial problem with manna from the sky, a mystery check in the mail in the mailbox. But see, that is a nearsighted answer. God may be using this to build up your faith, to teach you how to lean and depend on God. See, God could lift the Rona from the earth tomorrow, but God might be using this to teach you to long for fellowship with God more than you long for fellowship with people. See, the plans you have for the fall might come to pass or they might not, but through this, the long view is God is teaching you how to walk by faith and not by sight. See, to trust God with your future regardless of what happens to trust that God will order your steps and lead you on a path to victory regardless of which direction that you take. See, we may be asking, why a global pandemic with the tremendous loss of life? Why, God, did you permit our country to elect a corrupt, inept, reality TV performer as president just when our country would need effective leadership so badly? Why in the world, after all these years, after the Civil Rights Act, after the Voting Rights Act, why are we still dealing with racial injustice? Through a short lens, it might look like God is just pulling pulling back the covers on racial injustice. Through the video camera, God is revealing the police brutality that has been happening for more than a century. God is unmasking the racial inequalities that exist in our world. But don't just limit God with a myopic viewpoint. Perhaps this is the moment that God will use to begin to level the playing field once and for all. Perhaps this is the moment that will result in equal opportunities in business, in voting, in housing, in education, and in health care. God wants us to look beyond the immediate results. God wants us to see that there is more to this than we would ordinarily expect. You see, God has gotten the attention of the whole wide world. I mean, the entire world is focused on COVID-19. The entire world is viewing the civil unrest and the protests in the streets of America. We are all watching uh, the 
eyes of the world be open? But what if God is doing more than just opening eyes? What if God is using this as a moment to reveal the glory of the divine? What if God is using this moment to usher more souls into the kingdom? You see, this is the time for us to stop asking why and start asking what for. What is the, this is the time to shift from who's to blame to what is the purpose? What is it that God is going to accomplish as a result of all that is going on? How will our world be blessed as a result of this? When the land is healed of this virus, how many people will bow down and worship God? When you come out of this, what lessons will you have learned? When you come through this, how will you have changed? What will you know then that you didn't know before? When you come through this, what will God have prepared you for? Where is God taking you next? How can God use this moment of pain to push someone else to their purpose? Take a long view and know that there are more opportunities coming out of this than you think. And so if we're going to really uh, grasp the meaning of this and what God wants to do for us, we got to remember that there are more opportunities coming out of this than you think. But you also got to remember that our obedience is more important than you know. Our obedience is more important than you know. Text says that as Jesus is passing by, that he sees the man who is born blind. It's good to know that even when we are not looking for Jesus, I mean, he's born blind, he can't see him. But even when we are not looking for Jesus, that Jesus still sees us. Hallelujah. It, it is good to know that, that Jesus will still reach out to us and meet our unspoken needs. Because the man never asked to be healed. He never, he never asked to be touched. But, but Jesus saw a need and met it. And the text says that upon seeing him, that he took some of his own spit and he, he mixed it with the dirt and he made some clay. He made spit balls of clay that Jesus then took and smeared it on the man's closed eye. Now you need to know that this man did not just have eyes that could not see. But this man had his eyelids were always closed because he was born with no eyes. He was born with no optic nerve. He was born with no cornea. He was born with no retina, just an empty socket where his eyeball should have been. But Jesus, who was there in the beginning, took the same substance that God had used to make man in the first place and used it to make some eyes for this man on the fly. He took the dirt, he took the dust of the ground to create some eyes, to fill that empty eye socket. But even after Jesus touched him, don't miss this, it is not recorded that the eyes instantly appeared. Notice that after the touch, the man is given a command. He is given some instructions. He is told to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. And the text says that when he went away and washed, that he came back seeing. It was not a touch. It was not a declaration of healing that was made by Jesus that allowed him to have his sight. His sight only came after he was was obedient to the command of Christ. He was made whole after he obeyed the word of the Lord. He came back seeing. And the same is true for us today. It is not in the hearing of the word that our lives will change. It is in the doing of the word that our lives will change. So we are commanded to not just be hearers of the word, but we are to be doers thereof. It is not in the accumulation of knowledge about God that we build up our faith. It is in trusting God through uncertainty that we build up our faith. It is not knowing the 23rd Psalm that allows us to go through the valley of the shadow of death. No, it is actually walking through the valley of the shadow of death with God that assures us that God's presence is with us. It assures us that when we walk through the valley that we'll know that God is with us. You see, it is not just the promise of peace that we experience tranquility, but it is when we fix our minds on Christ in the 
midst of chaos that we know that God is our peace. It is not in saying I love you that proves your love to God, but by this do we know, the children of God, that they love and obey God's commandments. You see, it is in the, it is in the implementation of, of the commands of Christ in our lives that we really become whole. It is in the obedience. It is in doing what God has called for us to do. It is, it is doing, following the instructions that God has given us that we really begin to see change in our lives. And I hear the Lord saying the key to our wholeness is in our obedience. So you're going to always be half blind until you obey. You're going to always be walking with just a little bit of a limp until you obey. See, the reason why you're having a hard time hearing, the reason why you're having a hard time hearing God's voice is that you still have not obeyed. There is a reason why you can't see. There's a reason why you can't understand what is happening. It is because we still have not obeyed God's command. And God says, go to the pool. Go to the pool today and wash. And if you'll follow my commands, God says, when you come back, you'll come back seeing. You'll come back whole. You'll come back walking in the fullness of who God created you to be. See, Jesus had done his part, and now it was left for the man to do his part. And upon his obedience, everything changed in this man's life. All the elements are there for our miracle, but it is our obedience that will bring it to pass. If you really want to walk in the light, if you really want to be healed, if you really want to be whole, if you really want to come out of blindness, we've got to learn how to walk in obedience. But know this, having our eyes open will not eliminate all opposition. <laughs> It says some of them said it was him and some declared that it wasn't. And, and if you go on down in the text, he, he goes and he sees the Pharisees and the Pharisees look at him and they, 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 they don't even want to believe. They refuse to believe that he was ever blind in the first place. And the man tells them, he says plainly, he says, listen, I am the man. I am the one who was healed by that man named Jesus. He says, I don't know about all that other stuff that you're talking about. He says, but I once was blind and now I see. And even though he made that declaration, even though his parents testified to that declaration, the Pharisees still discounted, discounted the miracle that God had worked in his life because it didn't line up with their own theology. It's just like some people today. They refuse to believe your lived experiences because their privilege may makes it possible for them to never have to face what you have faced. But I'm so glad today, and I thank God that spiritual blindness is not permanent. You do understand that sometimes it is anger that can leave us spiritually blind, the anger that has left us in a blind rage. It is not permanent. The pain and the trauma that has produced the tears that has kept us from seeing, it is not permanent. The adrenaline that kicks in when we are afraid and causes us to have tunnel vision is not permanent. The sin that binds us to the that blinds us to the love of God and the possibility of forgiveness it is not permanent. I thank God that Jesus is still making it possible for blind eyes to be open. God is still working miracles on our behalf, but we must know that eye-opening events are not always comfortable. Eye-opening events are not convenient. Eye-opening events are not easy. Sometimes it will feel like you're in the midst of a sticky mess. Sometimes it will feel like you're trying to make it by your blind self to the pool of Siloam. Sometimes after our eyes are open, we will see some things that we never even wanted to see. Sometimes 
times, uh, even after you have changed, uh, people will make little of your transformation uh, just because they are still are uh, where they've always been. Uh, but I tell you today, uh, I want you to pray uh, for your eyes to be opened anyway uh, because your blindness uh, is just an opportunity uh, for God's glory to be revealed. Uh, you see, in this season, uh, in the year of 2020, uh, we got to pray uh, that God would open our eyes, uh, open our eyes uh, to all that we need to see. Uh, open our eyes uh, so that we can be a blessing to the kingdom. Uh, open our eyes uh, so that we can walk fully in our purpose. Uh, open our eyes uh, so that God's glory can be revealed in and through us. Uh, we not, may not be able to explain uh, all that is going on in the world. Uh, when we look around as to what's happening right now and today, uh, we may not, may not be able to give an explanation uh, for why it is we're going through what we're going through. Uh, we may not be able to, to come up with a reason uh, for why we're facing the hardships that we've had to endure. Uh, we may not be able uh, to know just what tomorrow will look like, uh, but how many of you know uh, we know who holds tomorrow uh, and we know who holds our hand. Uh, we know uh, that when Jesus came to the earth, uh, some saw him as nothing more than the son of a carpenter. Some saw him as just a man from Nazareth. They, they were too nearsighted to see who he really was. They were too nearsighted to see the potential in who Jesus really was. They were too nearsighted to see his potential and his purpose. And in their nearsightedness, they thought that when they arrested him, that they had nullified him. They thought that when they crucified him, that they had silenced him. They thought that when they buried him, that they had rid themselves of him. But how many of you know they were too nearsighted? They should have taken the long view. They should have understood that everything, hallelujah, that they did was so that God's glory would be revealed, that Jesus had come to do the work of the one that sent him, that he had worked while it was day and his purpose was fulfilled. If they had taken the long view, they would have seen that if they killed him, he would rise in three days. They would, If they had taken the long view, they would have seen that no man could take his life, but he would have to give it up freely. If they had taken the long view, they would have seen that though he was buried, his his work was completed when he rose from the dead with all power in his hand. I don't know about you, but oh say can you see? Can you see what God is doing in this moment? Oh say can you see that God is using this moment to do a new thing in our lives? That God is using this moment. God is using this moment to do something, to show us something, to reveal something. He is moving us closer to our purpose. Oh, say, can you see that you need to take the long view that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man. All that God has in store for us because we love him. Oh, say, can you see you need to take the long view that though he slay me, yet will I trust him. You need to take the long view that weeping may endure for a night, but joy still comes. Joy still comes in the morning. Take the long view. I know that we're in the midst of the beginning of the second half of 2020. I know that right now we don't know what the future holds, but I've come to tell you today, take the long view because the Lord says I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you. Plans to give you a hope and plans to give you a future. He says today take the long view and know that God hallelujah has great opportunities for you. That in the midst of a pandemic God will make you prosper. That in the midst of your pain God will move you closer to your purpose. That in the midst of your tests God is moving you to a place of a testimony. Somebody ought to declare right now. Oh I 
I can see. Oh, say, can you see what the Lord is doing? That the Lord is moving us. That the Lord wants us to take the long view. That the Lord wants us to be obedient to his word and his command. Take the long view that God is working it out for you and for me. Somebody ought to declare, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, that I might see. Is there anybody in here that says, I want to see you, Jesus? I want to see you, Lord. I want you to open the eyes of my heart, Lord, because I want to see you. I want to see you high and lifted up. I want to see you shining in the light of your glory. I want to see you pour out your power. I want to see you pour out your love. I want to see you, God. Open the eyes of my heart. Oh, say, can you see that God is doing a new thing? Oh, say, can you see that God is opening up doors that no man can close? Oh, say, can you see that God is doing something in your life that you've never seen before? And people will be amazed. The neighbors will be astonished. The, the, the religious won't believe it. But God it doesn't need their permission. God is going to do it anyway because God has declared that he is doing it not because of you and not in spite of you but everything God is doing he's doing it for his glory that his glory might be revealed that when you come out of this and they see how you made it when they see you stayed in your right mind when they see you didn't lose your house when they see you didn't lose your car when they see your children are doing all right when they heard you in the hospital and somebody put out the report that you wouldn't make it but when they see you came out with your hands lifted up when they see you came out with a testimony of his goodness when they see you came out with the glory of the Lord shining upon you when they see that God made a way out of no way God's glory will be revealed and the world will know that if it had not been for the Lord on our side we never would have made it the world will know that God is God is our keeper that God is our help that God is our strength that God is our protection that God is our love that God is everything we need God to be I wonder if there's anybody who can declare today that Lord I'm gonna trust you Lord I'm gonna walk with you Lord I'm gonna stand with you Lord I'm gonna hold on to your unchanging hand knowing knowing God that you will take me through and when it's all said and done when 2020 gets ready to go over to 2021 I'll be able to declare that it was God who brought me through I'll be able to declare that it was God who made a way I'll be able to declare that it was God it was God it was God and all the glory and all the honor and all the majesty belongs to you somebody help me bless his name but there's nobody like your God nobody can hold me like you hold me nobody can keep me like you keep me nobody can save me like you save me nobody can love me like you love me God we bless your name today for you are great and greatly to be praised hallelujah 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 Hallelujah. Lord, we bless your name. Oh, say, can you see that God is doing a new thing? Oh, say, can you see that God is making some changes in this world? And when it's all over, nobody's going to get the credit and nobody's going to get the glory. Nobody but God Almighty, he alone will be lifted up. He alone will be exalted. He alone will get the glory and the honor and the praise. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we bless your name today. We bless you, God, because you are showing us some things that we would never have been able to see. God, if you hadn't taken us this way. God, if we had to go on our own, we would have bypassed the pandemic. Father, if we had decided on our own, we would have long did away with this racial injustice. God, if we had to do it on our own, 
We wouldn't have never been sick. We wouldn't have never been without money. God, we would have never chosen this way. Oh, but God, you're showing us something. You're taking us around the way. You're taking us on the scenic route because you're trying to show us something. God, open the eyes of our heart that we might see what it is that you are revealing to us today. Open the eyes of our heart, God, that we won't come out of this still spiritually blind. But God, when 2020 is over, we'll be able to declare, I can see clearly now what the Lord has done. I can see clearly now how God used the pandemic to prosper me. I can see clearly now how God used my pain to push me into my purpose. How God used my doubt and, 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 and what looked like defeat to move me, hallelujah, to my destiny. God, I thank you today for what you are doing in our midst, for how you are blessing us, for how you're keeping us anyhow, huh, for what the devil meant for bad. God, you turn it around for our good. When the devil, when the devil saw Jesus die on that cross, he, he figured he had him. But God, what the devil meant for bad, three days later, you turned it around for our good. When Jesus rose, he rose with all power. And because he lives, because he lives, we've got the power to live. Because he rose from that grave, because he walked on the earth, we can walk. Because he got up, we can get up. Because he lives, we can live. And God, we're going to keep on living. We're going to keep on walking. We're going to keep on trusting. We're going to keep on believing. In the midst of a pandemic, we're going to prosper in God. So, Lord, have your way with us. Lord, we ask your blessings upon each person who's listening to the sound of my voice. God, open the eyes of their heart. Allow them to see what you're really doing. God, let us not lean to our own understanding. Help us to be cured from, from nearsightedness, from just what we've known before. Don't let us lean on that, on our own experience. But God, open our eyes to the reality of who you are and what you're doing. And then show us how we fit. Show us, show us what our part is in this thing. Show us how you're going to use us, even in the midst of it, to be a blessing to the kingdom of God. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the assurance of who you are. And I thank you, God, that you are the God of salvation. Hallelujah. And that your word goes forth and does not return void. We claim victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. To God be the glory. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. <laughs> Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart. So much for being a part of our worship experience today. If you'd like more information about New Jerusalem Ministries, simply type NJM into the comment section and someone will get back to you. If you've uh, joined us today and you're simply saying, Pastor, I need prayer. I want someone to come in agreement with me. Type prayer in the comment section and someone will reach out to you. 
If you've listened to the message today and joined us for worship and, and you saying in your heart that you are ready to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, oh, what a beautiful day that is. If that is you today, all you simply have to do is write heart or put up a heart emoji right there in the comment section and someone will get back to you. The Bible tells us that if we would just believe in our hearts and confess with our mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, that we will be saved. And so if that's you today, go ahead and make that confession. Put that heart in there and someone will get back to you. And if you're someone who already has a relationship with God through Jesus Christ and you're simply looking for a church home, New Jerusalem would love to have you be a part of, of this ministry. And if that's you, simply type home in the comment section and we will reach out to you and share with you what your next steps are. Again, thank you so much for being a part of this online worship experience. We pray that God bless blesses you abundantly above all that you could ask or think, and that you walk in the blessings of God.